Amen. And thank you again to our liturgists for leading us in worship today. So will you take a moment with me to wonder before we jump into our text, before we hear the word read and proclaimed, let's take a moment. I wonder why Jesus falls asleep when that storm surges. I wonder why God doesn't just fix all of the problems of the world. I wonder how we are called to help each other in hard times. I invite you to ponder those thoughts as we get ready to hear the word. And I'm gonna invite you to pray with me as we invite the Holy Spirit to guide us as we hear the word read and proclaimed. So I'm gonna say a line and you're invited to say it after me. There's even hand motions that go along with it. You're welcome to do those as well. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, open our ears and our hearts so we can hear your word. Amen. This morning, we are going to be reflecting on two passages of scripture. We're actually going to save the psalm, Psalm 107, for our hymn of response. In our faith tradition, one of the things we do is use the words from the Psalms in the Bible, and we turn them into hymns, and we sing those words together. And our hymnal happens to have a really beautiful arrangement of Psalm 107. So we're going to set that aside. We're going to hear that and sing it together after the sermon. But for now, we're going to hear our main scripture passage, which comes from Mark chapter 4. And we're going to start in verse 35 and go through verse 41. And Bonnie has linked that in the chat. So if you want to follow along online, I've also got it on the slides. And let us listen for the word of God. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boats, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the early hours of the morning, every January, the streets of Disney World are taken over by thousands of runners. These athletes flock to the theme park to have some fun while running through one of the so-called happiest places on earth. Thursday kicks off with a 5K. And then on Friday, there's a 10K. Saturday has the half marathon, and Sunday rounds out the week with the full marathon. Now, most runners elect to run one of those races, and each one of them is a challenge on their own, to be sure. 
but for some runners, that's not enough. Some runners sign up for what's called the Goofy Challenge, where they'll run the half marathon on Sunday, Saturday and then turn around and run the full marathon on Sunday. And there are more extreme options there. There's also the Dopey Challenge, where you run all four races of the event. You start with the 5K, then the 10K, then the half marathon, then the full marathon. I gotta tell you, I can't imagine running all four races four days in a row. That feels like an insurmountable feat. Just when you finish one race, you've got to ramp up and run another one the next day. Well, this marathon event, the series of races, it sort of feels to me like the season that we are currently in running one race after another. To me, March 2020 felt like a 5K. It was difficult, but it was doable. We were told we just needed those two weeks to flatten the curve. And so we stayed home and we waited for life to resume. It quickly became clear though that the coronavirus, it wasn't just gonna go away. And so we started to wear masks, we started to shut things down, but COVID still surged last summer. We were left to wonder about this mysterious virus that didn't die down in the heat of summer. Life became a bit harder, sort of like running a 10K. Well, the vaccine was created and given FDA approval, there was growing excitement as our healthcare workers got that first round of shots and then more and more folks were getting vaccinated. But as we waited for more age groups to become eligible, we experienced that next surge in January, one that was even higher than we had in the summer. We were still hopeful, but weary, sort of like finishing up a half marathon. Then more and more folks were getting vaccinated. We held on to the hope that the vaccine for kids is coming soon. And then seemingly out of nowhere, this Delta variant came sweeping in. What was supposed to be the summer of resuming activities turned into what one psychologist calls a whiplash summer. We didn't see it coming. And now we have to keep up this momentum with our precautions while still trying to recover from those previous surges. I don't know about you, but this all feels like we have been signed up for that dopey challenge, running multiple races in a row, but nobody told us that we were signing up for it. We didn't see it coming and we certainly didn't train for this. And now as we are seeing for many, exhaustion is setting in. I would imagine that those 12 disciples could relate to our exhaustion. They had no idea what they were getting into when Jesus calls them to follow him. No doubt that their pace of ministry, learning from Jesus, trying to take all of this in, traveling around the region, all of it left them exhausted. So here's Jesus wrapping up an epic sermon sharing all of these parables, preaching on some heavy topics. And he invites his disciples to get in a boat. They're gonna to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. He has plans to spread that gospel far and wide. And they all hop in this boat. Before they know it, Jesus is asleep. It seems exhaustion set in. I would imagine the disciples are tempted to go to sleep as well, giving the demanding day they just had, a nice nap would feel pretty good right about then. But a storm rises up, threatening their boat and threatening their lives. 
in a panic, they go to wake up Jesus and ask him to save them. And in, I would imagine, a groggy haze, he tells the seas to be calm and the storm dies down. The disciples are relieved, no doubt, but then Jesus rebukes him with his questions. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? He asks. Ouch. That hardly seems fair given the circumstances. This was no ordinary storm after all. If it had been, they would have seen those clouds building overhead. And I would imagine those disciples who were previously fishermen before their current career, I bet they would have suggested they wait out the storm before getting in that boat. But this was no ordinary storm. It was something unnatural that came out of nowhere. Can we really blame the disciples for being afraid? Jesus's question seems unfair at first, but then I have to wonder what he was trying to teach them in that moment. There they were in this chaotic storm and their savior was asleep, but they weren't completely hopeless. They had fishermen in that boat. Those who knew a thing or two about stormy seas, surely they could have kept things under control, even if just for a few minutes to buy themselves time. And we are told in the text that there were other boats nearby. We don't hear much about them. Mark doesn't disclose their situation, but from the sound of it, these other boats on the sea, they are not hit by this freak storm. What if the disciples had called out to them for help, a lifeline to bring them to safety? The thing is, they didn't have to rely solely on Jesus to get them through this storm. They had their own expertise. They had each other and they had neighbors nearby. The storm may have felt insurmountable when they were in it, but they were equipped in a way that could have helped them get through. I wonder if Jesus's question, have you no faith? I wonder if that was more about themselves and each other than it was about their faith in him to save them from the storm. I often think about that famous poem about the footprints in the sand. I remember a cross-stitched version hanging on the wall in a neighbor's house when I was a kid. And in the picture, there's footprints on the beach representing a person's life journey. For most of that journey, there are two sets of footprints, but for some parts, the most hardest, exhausting parts of the journey, there's only one set of footprints. The poem says that that is the time when Jesus carried the person through that difficult season. Now, I think that's a lovely sentiment, but I'll be honest, the cynic in me wonders if that's the part of the journey where Jesus just fell asleep. And maybe he really did leave that person on their own. He's got a track record of doing this. We see him do this in the boat during that raging storm. Maybe that single set of footprints represents the time when that person found their own resilience to get through a hard season. Maybe it represents that time when they did reach out for help, when they knew they were overwhelmed. In my mind's imagination, I think Jesus uses this opportunity in the boat to get those disciples ready. He's not going to be with them forever. He knows this to be true. I wonder if that moment on the boat is more of a drill, preparing those disciples for later days, like those three days when he is dead in the tomb and their faith is put to the test. And later on, when he ascends into heaven and they are left to pick up where he leaves off, these disciples would carry on Jesus's work as the hands and the feet of Christ. 
equipped with what they need to make the gospel heard and known. Jesus can't always be there to do the work for them, to save them from those stormy seas, to rescue them from their plight, but he also knows that they have got what it takes to navigate those difficult seasons. Those disciples, they were not alone on that boat. They had each other, and together they had what it took to get to safe storm, safe shore rather. Together we are navigating a storm worldwide. Some of us are feeling the exhaustion of running, of experiencing surge after surge as COVID continues to wreak havoc. And we know that the rest of the world's troubles carry on as well. Earthquakes still hit, war still rages on. It would be nice if God would just step in and fix all of this mess, quiet the storm. But that's not how God always works. We need to remember that we are not alone in this. Like those disciples on the boat, we've got what it takes to get through. If only we open our eyes to see what is in front of us and what is around us. I think about that line from Mr. Rogers. He says, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. We will always find people who are helping. Who are our helpers? Who is in the boat with us or in a boat nearby? We've got those scientists who have created a vaccine at remarkable speed and efficacy. We've got doctors and nurses who have worked tirelessly to find ways to treat those with COVID. We've got superintendents and county judges who are defying state orders to ensure the safety of our schools and our communities. And we've got each other as we do our best to mask up in public and get vaccinated if we're eligible. We are not alone. God equips us with what we need to come together and get through a crisis. And Jesus never leaves us. He is right there all along, making sure that we get through, sending the Holy Spirit as that comforting presence. The story of the storm at sea, it reminds us of God's mysterious power but it also reminds us of God's ever-present comfort, even if God's presence isn't always obvious. It's easy to lose sight of things when we are caught in that storm, when we are battling a pandemic that just won't go away. We need to remember to look around, to recognize who is in the boat with us, who is helping us through, How is God at work in others to bring us wellness and safety? I'm reminded of a passage from the book, The Pilgrim's Progress. The main character, Christian, is an archetype for the faith. And he faces this dangerous river that he must cross. He has this companion with him. The companion's name is Hopeful. And together they wade out into that water. Even though Christian fears what will happen, he feels like this will be his demise. But then Hopeful speaks up and says, be of good cheer, my brother. I feel the bottom and it is good. May we recognize that hopeful voice, pointing out how we will get through these trying times. If only we depend on each other, the hands and the feet of the body of Christ working together 
to get us through this storm. Amen. As we are still in the storm and we're getting ready for our students to go back to school, we want to offer a blessing for students, for staff, for administrators, for parents and grandparents and everyone who are supporting students at this time of every age and every level. We know that this is a hard season. It's hard to know what is safe and what is right but let us trust that we're gonna get through this storm. And so let us say a prayer as we bless our students. I see some of our young ones. So good to see your faces. My two are, they're in the hall. They've got camera. <laughs> they're camera shy this morning, but they're here. And I'm gonna say a prayer as we bless the school year that we're about to embark on. So will you pray with me? Merciful God, we are grateful for the resilience, the innovation, and the determination of our students, teachers, school staff, parents, and administrators. We begin this new school year in prayer because we are anxious for our students to resume school, whether in person or virtual. We pray that they be safe from COVID-19. We pray for a better year this year, for a safe return, for the health of students and teachers and school staff, for school boards and administrators under pressure to make difficult decisions, and for parents exhausted by the uncertainty and constantly changing plans. Help us, holy God, to bear with one another in love as we face the new challenges this year that will inevitably come. We pray that our teachers banked enough summer renewal to face any new disruptions. We ask that the hard lessons students learned since the start of this pandemic, that that will give them confidence and courage to face whatever lies ahead with confidence in your ability to do more than we ask or imagine. We pray that faith will deter fear and hope will bring new life. Bless us, holy God, in our efforts to protect and care for students so they can focus on their healthy development and their studies. Lead us all to health and healing. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So friends, be looking out in the mail. You're gonna be getting a blessing card and some stickers with our beloved Be Kind Be You message from BBS last year that has just spoken so much comfort and such a good reminder to us. Those are going to be coming in the mail this week, and you can put those stickers on your water bottle or your lunchbox or backpack, wherever you want to put it to be reminded that you are very loved by this church and that God loves you more than we could ever, ever express. And know that we are praying for each of you as you embark on this school year, praying for blessings to be upon you. So let us continue in our time of worship. We're going to sing a hymn called Give Thanks to God Who Hears Our Cries. And I'm going to invite Carol to lead us in the accompaniment.
Um, Please join us in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by, by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. One and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Catholic. The communion of saints. The resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Offering 